Hello good Hello good people, it's Rob Lee. It seems that every person walking this earth uses the word change with common regularity. It has become a buzzword for the masses, politics, and the cons that control the flow of information. There seems to be change going on constantly, yet the only change we ever see is for the worse. We never talk about the change that is actually for the better, or change potentially for the better. The bald eagle is incredibly beautiful, majestic, and it is the symbol of the United States people. This beautiful bird has the longest lifespan of its species. It can live up to 70 years. But for the eagle to reach the age of 70, the eagle must make some very tough decisions. In about the 35th to 40th year of its life, its long talons can no longer grab prey. Its long, sharp beak has bended, it's aged, and it cannot do what it used to do. Its uh, heavy wings have become too heavy. Uh, its chest feathers, due to their thickness and weight, will begin to stick to the chest and make it difficult to fly. Essentially, the eagle is about ready to die. It's just going to either fall to earth or it's going to fly, fly someplace and die. That's it. The eagle is left with only one of two options. Die or go through a painful process of change. The process requires this. The eagle to live and survive and to go further in his or her life must fly to a mountaintop where it will sit on a nest and there the eagle will spend months knocking its beak against a rock until it plucks it out. Then the eagle will wait for a new beak to grow and when this new beak, new beak grows it will pluck out its talons. Then when the talons begin to grow back the eagle will take the talons and start plucking its thick heavy feathers out and after five months the eagle will take its famous flight of rebirth and live for another 30 to 35 years. This is amazing. Why is the change needed? Change is needed to survive and live, to fulfill your destiny. There may be hurdles and there may, there may be obstacles and changes that you are going to have to make to fulfill your destiny. We too have to start the change process. We, we have to pluck out our unpleasant memories, our negative habits, our fixed mindset. We must free ourselves from past burdens, sins, lies, and mental conditioning of this world. Only when we make these changes can we take advantage of the present and of the love that our Father has for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. We must do as the eagle. We must have a time of decision-making and suffering that will change us into the children that our Father wants us to be. This is what happens to all the true children of the Almighty Father. There comes a time when you have to go through something that is going to change you. It's going to make you. And most of the time, it's going to be hard and painful. It's going to hurt like hell. When you get through it, and if you are called by God, you will get through it, even when you think that you can't. You will start doing the work even though you did not think at first that you would be able to, to do the work. The Almighty Father calls us to make these changes, and sometimes your Father will scold us, scold you and I, to force us to make these changes. Luke 13, 5 says, the words of Jesus Christ, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, the word repent does not mean to pray. The word repent means simply to change. Revelation 3, 19 the words of Jesus again, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and make the changes. Eagles become stronger as they get older. They become bolder, their eyes sharper, younger and soar higher as they grow older. Even as the bones grow old, the spirit grows stronger. For you and I, we're growing older, but our spirit is growing stronger. We are readying ourselves for this last mile. Brethren, we have to make the changes and feel the strength as the, as the days go by. And most of, that, most of that change is spiritually. We have a promised life that is wonderful beyond our comprehension. Psalm 103.5 says, Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This is your father. To satisfy your desires so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So that you may be strong enough to sustain yourself in the last mile. Because it gets hard. And it's hard now. The eagle and the snake are enemies. 
Most folks never, never will know the true enemy and they'll never know how to fight the enemy. You and your ancient enemy go back further than most folks know. Possibly before the Garden of Eden, but for sure, we do know that we were given an enemy from very early on. It was part of our growth and part of our destiny. This is God the Father speaking to the serpent, who was also known as the devil or the dragon or Satan in the Garden of Eden. Now, Eve has said that the serpent beguiled her in, in Genesis 3.14. The Father has condemned the serpent forever. The serpent is not a talking snake. Okay, In verse 15, the, the, the Almighty Father says this to the serpent, who I said is called the devil. Genesis 3.15 says this, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Enmity is hatred. Therefore we have hate between the seeds of the woman and the seeds of the serpent, the devil. Two families at war until the end. It also says the devil will bruise the heel of our seed, and we will bruise the head of their seed. Killing the head is symbolic for annihilation and victory. That's total defeat when you, when you take off the head. We've won this war, yet it will have a climax. We have Jesus Christ, and he will crush the serpent and his family beneath his feet. In fact, when Jesus' blood was shed at Calvary, the serpent was defeated as we march on to our destiny. Enemies surround us. We are the children of God. We are the flock of Jesus. And we were warned the world would hate us. Brethren, you have the right to defend yourselves and your families. I've always told you that and always will. But never forget that as much as we are attacked and potentially attacked physically on every front, Ephesians 6 reminds us that we are also under spiritual attack and in a spiritual war. Eagles, when they come down to this earth, when they come down to the ground, they never attack their enemy, which in their most their most enemy that we know of is the snake. They never attack the snake or prey on the land. Rather, they take off to the sky and tear them to pieces. We should do the same thing. We should fight our battles and our wars in the spiritual realm. You see, symbolically, when we when we come down to this earth, when we leave the spirit to come down, and we have to encounter these people that are evil and hate us when we have to come into this world. When we have to confront them or deal with them or fight with them, whatever is going to happen, we need to fight this war in the spiritual realm. The battle belongs to the king of kings. Take your, your fights and your flights and your problems before your father in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that you do should be in, a, in the spiritual war first. This does not mean that sometimes you may not have to confront somebody physically, but it should be done always in a spiritual and with a spiritual power behind you, your Father in Jesus. When the mighty winds blow, the eagle uses its power to scale to greater heights. We will do the same thing. Use the tribulations and the problems of this world to soar higher and be closer to your Father and Creator. We must take our enemy to the spiritual realm because we are in a spiritual war. The Father told us that we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4.23 and 4.24. Jesus Christ tells us in John 6.63, 6, The flesh profiteth nothing. The spirit is life. John 14.23 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So let the Holy Spirit that lives in you guide you. Let it guide you as you finish out your life. And when you are directed by the Holy Spirit, you are walking in the light and you will spiritually soar high in these last days. We must make those changes to be able to, to soar high. Just like the eagle had to stop and make those life changes to be able to go higher, we must do the same thing. If we want to go higher with our Father, we must be willing to make those changes. We must be willing to stop and say, I've got to make these changes if I am to go further. We will, soar, we will soar again in the name of Jesus the Christ. Those who love and serve Jesus will renew their strength for these last days in this final battle because we are in the final days with the last battle. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.